It's funny. I actually remember the moment I first wanted to learn to play guitar. I was visiting my grandmother, and the music video for Smells Like Teen Spirit came on. My grandma had cable, which meant MTV, a window into a world of pop culture I was otherwise pretty isolated from. If you're among those people who find such themes distasteful, you may want to- Anyway, in that video, Kurt Cobain had a blue Fender Mustang with a stripe across the corner. I was 11 and particularly susceptible to his charms. That trademark combination of rage and apathy that for some reason just felt really trenchant in 1992. I saved up for weeks and eventually bought the album. It immediately became the central text in my world. Naturally, I wanted to know as much as I could about the guy who'd written those songs. I sat in the magazine aisle at CVS, reading any issue that mentioned his name. I wanted to know where he'd grown up, who his influences were, and above all, I wanted that blue guitar. Of course, so did everyone else. In fact, last year it sold for $4.5 million. Anyway, forget that. As a kid, I couldn't afford anything Fender was selling. So instead, I went through a long string of crappy thrift store guitars. There was a Tesco with a neck that would wobble, a fake melody maker that wouldn't stay in tune. This thing was called a Hondo All-Star. Anyway, after all that, I finally ended up with this, a Squire Bullet from 1983. It felt great to play, but I hated the way it sounded and the way it looked. And most of all, I hated that it said Squire on the headstock. I had been told by other kids that Squires were the crappy guitars that Fender didn't feel they could put their own name on. Of course, the sound was easily fixed. I wanted to be able to play big, chunky power chords, so I replaced the pickups. But the looks? Well, I got the bright idea to paint the guitar. My bandmates and I stripped all the sunburst paint off of it. I bought some blue spray paint and we went to town. The very first thing I painted over was the Squire logo I had been so embarrassed by. This is footage of somebody doing this right. To do a good job painting a guitar, you have to sand it down, paint it, sand it down again, paint it, and you have to repeat that process a bunch of times. Suffice it to say, I didn't do that, and mine came out looking weird and sticky and not glossy the way electric guitars are supposed to look. I decided to cover up my terrible mistake. I found some painter's tape, which was coincidentally the same color as the paint I had been using, and it sort of mummified the entire body of the guitar. Problem solved. I played that guitar for about six years, but I was always a little bit embarrassed by it. Of course, time passed and I became interested in different kinds of music. I didn't really need a punk guitar anymore. When I got older, my friend sold me a nice Fender Jazzmaster, a guitar I love and play to this day. As for the blue guitar? Well, I moved many times and the blue guitar always came with me, but it stayed in its gig bag. In fact, this past December, I realized that I hadn't played it for a solid 12 years, so I listed it on eBay. Of course, in the description, I went into great detail about its many misadventures, so it only sold for $200, about $600 less than if I had just left it in mint condition. Anyway, right before sending it off, I picked it up one last time, and I immediately knew I had made a mistake. All that work I had put in in college had paid off. It felt great to play, and it sounded great, I'd really just let looks get in the way of what mattered. Of course, by this point, I had no choice. It had sold on eBay, I had to send it off. But I did start thinking about what it was that I had originally wanted, that stupid blue Mustang from the Nirvana video. So I googled it and saw that Adorama was selling a Squire version of the competition Mustang for $140. So I bought it, and it just arrived. Let's check it out. It looks really cool, but also a bit different than I expected. It's definitely a different shade of blue from the one Kurt Cobain had, a different shade of blue from the blue guitar I had, and it even looks different than it did in the Adorama listing. In fact, it almost looks like there are microscopic sparkles embedded in the paint. Okay, let's give it a spin. So here's a quick clean pattern. Let's add some more layers in. It actually feels pretty great to play. It's short scale, which I personally prefer, and the neck fretboard is very flat. 
I also appreciate that it's mostly been set up pretty well. I had to adjust two of the strings. Okay, time to take it apart. My goal for this instrument is to do exactly what I had originally wanted to do with my old blue guitar. You know, fix any minor playability issues, swap out the pickups, and turn it into a guitar that's useful for all the different kinds of music that I make. Now that I've got the strings off, my first order of business is to take the neck off. The neck on this thing is very thinly varnished. It almost feels untreated. So I'm going to refinish it. In order to do that, I need to take all the tuners off of it. And then I need to tape the fretboard with painter's tape to make sure I don't accidentally apply the finish to that. This whole painter's tape scene is a little too reminiscent of that last guitar, but anyway. The finish I'm using is True Oil, which was originally meant to be used as gun stock finish. Applying it is easy. You just wipe it on with a rag and then let it sit for 20 minutes. You can repeat that process as many times as you want. I did it three times. Next, I'm going to move on to the body of the guitar. I'm going to unscrew the existing pick guard and lift the electronics out. This is what the stock electronics look like. There are two pickups, a switch that lets you choose between them, and those are all hooked up to these two knobs that control the volume and tone. Finally, there's a jack, which is, of course, where you plug the guitar into the amplifier. I'm going to be changing these pickups, but because the pickups I've ordered aren't the same size, I can't reuse the pickguard that this came with. So I've ordered a brand new pickguard, which has holes to fit the new pickups I'm planning to install. Before I can put the pickups in, there's one more step. A common problem with electric guitars is that they're very susceptible to electrical interference. To head this off at the pass, I'm going to be applying copper foil to the inside of the guitar cavity. The idea behind this is that it should create a sort of conductive cage that will intercept any interference. As you can see, the copper is sold as a roll of tape. You cut off little pieces and apply them and then trim the edges so that they won't stick out from under the pick guard. This stuff is really sticky, and it's very easy to cut your fingers on the edges. Now that I've got foil on the underside of the pick guard, it's time to install the pickups. I'm gonna replace the neck pickup with a Seymour Duncan quarter pounder. That is what's in my Jazz Master, so I know I love it. It's a single coil pickup, which should be good for rounded, clean tones, perfect for the kind of music I tend to make now. But it's also pretty high output, so it should work nicely with distortion too. In the bridge, I'm going to put a Seymour Duncan JB. It's what I had in my old blue guitar, and I loved it. Since I'm using essentially the same two pickup configuration as the guitar started with, all I have to do is unsolder the old pickups from the switch and solder the new pickups. The final step is to apply the rest of the copper foil. The goal is to cover every part of the body cavity. Now that I'm done, it sort of looks like a space capsule from the 60s. Okay, I think we're finally ready to reassemble this thing. All told, that took about four hours, and most of that time was spent on the copper foil. Hope it was worth it. Okay, let's give this thing a spin. I'm going to try to recreate that same piece of music as before so that I can compare the old pickups with the new pickups. First, the rhythm pattern. And here's the lead. Just for comparison's sake, here is what the old pickup sounded like. If you listen carefully, you can definitely hear the difference, but yeah, it's a judgment call which one sounds better. And of course, the new pickups are also really great for distorted rock songs. To 
happy with this guitar. I feel like I've done both my current self and my teenage self proud. And in the process, I've hopefully learned not to be such a gear snob. It plays well, it sounds great, it looks really nice, and it says Squire on the headstock. And this time, I'm not painting over it. If you enjoy this video, and you haven't already subscribed to this channel, now is a great time. It's free, and if you ding the bell, you'll be notified whenever I make one of these videos. Also, I've taken some recordings of the guitar and turned them into a decent sampler sample library. Those are now up on my Patreon. The Patreon is $5, and every month you get an exclusive sample library. Enjoy! <laughs>